Uh, so nodal position is determined by the moon's elliptical relation to the orbit of the Earth around the sun. The south node and north node are non-physical objects. They're positioned exactly opposite to one another. Yep. And then in terms of mandala movement around the wheel, the sun and earth move counterclockwise, representing the existential imprinting of life moment by moment in the now. The nodes move clockwise, directly connected to the procession of the equinoxes and connected to larger cycles themselves. Yep. <laughs> the, the, yeah, this it's beautiful to, to stop there for a second. These the, what's connected to this outer procession. This is what keeps us. We've always had the sense we're in touch with the entire universe. It's through the direction that the node, it's through the nodes that that is uh, substantially true. It keeps us aligned with the greater movement of everything, essentially. Yeah, it's really neat, like tuning into the nodes and like preparing for this, because I feel like the other planets, like we can conceptualize, you can see the moon, you can see Jupiter out, we can have an idea of this. But like the nodes, I always felt like I never felt like anyone really like explained them a way that I could understand. Like I knew they're like these like positions that are calculated but what they actually mean. So it's actually fun of like understanding how they're really like the background of like what we're experiencing in a moment. These positions are calculated by way of a perpendicular to earth and to the moon's actual gravitational core. So um, while I never got into the science of the nodes, I don't recall Ra Uruhu talking about exactly how the nodes were chosen, but I've always come to realize or guess, I, I should say that it's, it's, part of a gravitational calculation mm -hmm. that captures and directs the neutrino stream air there go affecting it mm -hmm. so the the river of the neutrino ocean pours through us and as it pours through the nodes those physical qualities of the nodes even though they're theoretical points in space seem to uh, affect the neutrino stream thereby having their unique imprint like a planet affects the neutrino stream having its unique imprint yep with a really great description. Yep. All right, so purpose and role. So while the sun earth binary provides the archetype of your role, then you as a unique differentiated being operating correctly can fulfill that role. The nodes lay the dynamic for how you're going to move from characteristic to role because they set the stage, providing the background environment in which you emerge. The fulfillment of your purpose is done on a specific stage through a specific continuity of scenes. Mm. Yeah. Yep. No, this this role and this movement of taking us from, you know, the first 40 years and then in the second 40 years and and several other movements will show as we, we look at the body graphs. Yeah. It's yep. the setting of the stage that the nodes bring. So it's like in the great stage play of life, the nodes are the set dressing and the characters that are like in the background that we're going to be experiencing and how we're going to be seeing the environment that we're in. Yeah, absolutely. What we see in the environment, the sense we get in this environment, as well as our movement, because the nodes hook us into the larger universe. At the same time, they also act as they sort of move us and direct us in a way. So they become our destiny. And it's both of them. We'll be looking at the conscious nodes because that's what's in the sky right now mm -hmm. from the you know, personality side. However, inside the body graph, it becomes a synthesis of both the unconscious and the conscious and this destiny. So think about destiny for a minute, right? Every time we say the word destiny, it's like, what's my destiny? What's my fate? Oh, and then suddenly you land someplace. You landed some places like you land at a job. You land in a home. You're buying a house. You find the perfect place. I hear it all the time with my customers, in my mortgage business that the, um, they, they love the home. And it fell through. And almost always there's this universal acceptance of it must it wasn't meant to be. And always the next one that comes along that they finally do get is always better. <laughs> always. And it's this that's a trajectory. It feels like a destiny. But our nodes are pulling us along this trajectory. The one thing we can't do is read it and say, oh, you'll be here on Tuesday, four years from now. We don't know that. That's that's fortune telling we can see after we've gotten somewhere or when you're on your way to a place, if you're aware of this, you can start to see, oh, my God, I'm getting to where my nodes are. We should look at our nodes. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So setting the stage. To really understand your nodes is to recognize the world you are intended to deal with, the environment you're intended to deal with, the kind of people who are meant to be there in the background of your life. 
the kind of forces that are there to provide you with exactly the right connections, the right interaction, the right education, and the right whatever, because they belong in your scene. You have the opportunity to fulfill your purpose. The potential to fulfill your purpose has been seen against that background, because it's in that background, it's in that environment that your purpose has to be achieved. And that's a quote from Raul Ruhu, the founder of the Human Design System. I love his quotes, too. They're always so right to the point. No, we were talking about this the other night, right? And no one else will really, I mean, you know, no one else does, will do when it comes to, you got, you always got to go back to listen to Ron then before you. Oh, yeah. I love yeah. going back to the source. Like different people's interpretation of human design are always like fun and interesting in that outer authority kind of way. And mm -hmm. then I always feel pulled back to Rob. Like, okay, what is the precision of what he said and what did he mean? And then right. like, I can pull from that. Right. Same here. Same here. I've synthesized so much out of what Ra has told, taught me, you know, personally speaking, and it's incredible. Um, something to mention about this beautiful thing you just read. It's very true. You know who doesn't really get to experience that quite? People who haven't awakened to their design. Mm will always be experiencing this in an intermittent fashion, up and down, on and off, in various amounts of, of disorder. And really the not self people, which I am, you know, I was dramatically, um, yeah. and everyone is just, oh, no, yeah. don't, it's, it's not a big deal for anyone. It's like, I'm not a not self. No, you, you are. You'll, you'll see. It's okay. Yeah. It, it doesn't even matter. Just recognize if you come in for a reading and you come in to start to know this knowledge, suddenly your trajectory through life will change. That's the point. And um, that's what do we call that? Because we know this is a scientific measure of what will happen in reality. Yet it does sound a little bit. Um, what does it sound like? Come up with a word for me, Moni. Well, what it's, it sounds a little funny, I think, just because it's something that's non-tangible. And so we're learning to navigate how we quantify the intangible, but we know that something is there. Like, right. you know when there's an energy, you know there's a vibe, you know when there's a creepy dude and you're like, stay away from that. Like, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. that's not nothing. There's something that our body is picking up on, some kind of knowledge that it was being pick up, picked up on. The same thing with love or hope or any of these, like, deep healing. The intuition. This, the everyone's intuition familiar there. with intuition, especially, you know, I say especially moms. I don't know if that's yeah. true, especially, but we all are. And it's incredible. Yeah. Um, so that, just that alone, what the hell is intuition? Exactly. Um, so, so it's, it's learning how to quantify that intangible that we know is real and being willing to kind of jump into that. And that I think mm. there's a lot of nervousness or skepticism or people that are like, I'm just going to go with what I know is real and tangible and in front of me, which is great. And like, we need that. Um, but that's why I think sometimes we can feel a little funny in how we can describe something because it's this energetic thing, but it's, it's real and we're experimenting with it. And it's, it's not just like a belief. It's not a morality. It's, you know, you start learning the different keynotes, you start learning what energies might be at play, and then you start learning how to notice them around you and you start kind of play with them and like, okay, well, what happens when I act like this? What happens when I respond in this way? And it feels like this fun little game that we get to start playing with. And, and right, design. right, 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 exactly. So, um, yep, yep, said what I want to say. <laughs> Cool. All right. So natal nodes within our personal human design charts, the nodal placement at our birth and three months prior to our birth. The, our birth is shown on the right. The three months prior is shown on the left when you're looking at your human design chart. Um, this is representing the environments we'll experience in our lives. The south node is the focus until the Uranus opposition around age 40 and then the north node after. And I like to see it as our personal act one and act two and like mm. the environment that we're going to be engaging in. Yeah. Now you know why we were calling it destiny, because it really does end up being where you were going. So the, the south node, the, the horseshoe that's, you know, facing with the belly of the horseshoe down, um, that's the south node on both sides and, uh, you know, personality and design side. And this is the first 40 years. This literally, when we look at this, this becomes the theme of what we're going to do as we go through our maturity. Um, we're going to count on these particular activities guiding emotion to where we're going to go. All the planets, you can count on them putting a thing in you that shows up as some kind of like an activity or a thing or a way. But the nodes do it specifically into hooking you onto a trajectory, much like a, a, the arm of a streetcar hooks onto the power line and then takes that streetcar in a direction. 
it, we, you know, our monopole hooks onto the line of trajectory of these nodes, north and south, um, and Shazam, we're moving. So when we read the two south nodes on the charts that will pull up, we'll see what does that look like. And the yeah. same with the north when we get there. Absolutely. All right. So within the collective experience, the current positions of the nodes represent the scene we're inhabiting together. Nodal place, node a cycle uh, is approximately 18 years to return to the same gate. And the midpoint is around nine years. And then the mm -hmm. node shift gate placement every three to five months. Yep. Yep. They just keep moving. <laughs> and, and it's important to notice. So if anyone who knows a little bit about human design, when you're looking at the gates, they move through all six lines. They start at line one and they move up to do, 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 do. And when you're looking at the nodes, they start at the six line and they move down line by line until they get to one and leave. So uh, if you know anything about our genome and about genetics, it's like a, a mixing pot. So, you know, those cool um, mixers that have three spinnies in them and a bowl that's always moving and the spinnies move different directions and they keep, and then the, it needs bread, let's say, or it needs a, a thing that you're about to put into an oven. Our genes are doing that. They're constantly mixing in opposite directions to, to guarantee difference. It mm -hmm. guarantees us uniqueness and difference. And so this is, that's one of the reasons they spin in opposite directions. It was just the forces were wise when they got this whole train rolling. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Basically, we're in the correct scene of our movie at any given moment, right? Purpose can mm. only be fulfilled within the context of the environment of the life. They're made for each other. The moment one goes beyond the characteristics and one is able to operate correctly as oneself and begins to live out the true nature of one's role, then you discover this is the ideal environment because it is the environment that is there to nurture that perfection of you as a unique and differentiated being. It's all about acting correctly as yourself based on strategy and authority. Only then can you take advantage of such a challenging polarity. But that's beautiful. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have thought to string all those beautiful words together that way. <laughs> I, I pulled everything from, from raw. So this is all like, I only went through raw sources, specifically the 32 nodal environments. And then I collected yep. a bunch of things and then I pieced them together in a way to make them flow really nicely. So this is all copy edited raw. It's really interesting um, how it's phrasing it out of just like, okay, so this is the environment we're going to be in. This is what we're going to be seeing in our environment. And then how can we still find our purpose and like live in that environment, right? It's like, we can't change the environment we're in. This is where we're going to be living in. How can we best deal with it and go? For it? Acceptance is about recognition that we don't see properly. Everything about this is how one sees. If one is not operating correctly, it can become overwhelming to have an environment where there's always interference, where there are always attempts to get in one's way, that one can turn on that and end up being very depressed, that the world is against us, and ultimately that we fall by the wayside rather than being able to operate correctly and fulfill our purpose in that environment. If one mm. is operating correctly, that environment of potential interference doesn't necessarily mean it's a negative. It's the very thing necessary for the fulfillment of the process. Well put. <laughs> yeah, Ra was really good at the words. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it, it's just a perfect conclusion.